the World Series is on the air. This is Stuart Bond at Navin Field, Detroit, where the St. Louis Cardinals and the Detroit Tigers start their battle for the World Championship. The play-by-play descriptions of all the World Series games are brought to you with the compliments of the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Russell Ford, and your local Ford dealer, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks. The sponsors will be amply repaid if you get enjoyment from these broadcasts. In order that you might hear the play-by-play description of this game in its entirety, a number of advertisers have time to omit their regular afternoon broadcast. Among those are CAMA programs, usually heard at 3.15 over some of these stations. The program this afternoon will be heard instead at 4.30. Also, Procter & Gamble, manufacturers of dress, and the makers of Oxidol, removing their broadcast from 3 o'clock to 4.30. In behalf of the Ford Motor Company and the National Broadcasting Company, we wish to thank them for their courtesy. Now, fans, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a man whose voice has been familiar to you over the air for years. Here he is to give you the thrill and color of this World Series three game atmosphere. It's wild around here at South Delta Park, but here is the man who can tell you about it and picture it to you right there in your home. It's Sam McNamee, and here he is. Thanks, Ford. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. We're at Navin Field this afternoon. If you'd like to make it in just about 15 minutes or even a little less, the World Series will be open by the umpire who will howl play ball. And in this case, it will be Michael of the American League who will be behind the plate this afternoon. When he yells play ball, then the body will stop. Magic words for the 47,000 wild-eyed, rapid baseball fans gathered in the stands, while thousands run around the park, hoping that by some miracle, they'll be able to squeeze themselves through those fans' crowds tomorrow with a shoehorn or something of the guy. The Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals, the Redbirds, that's the setup. And his general opinion is correct. The next week to produce a series of games which will make the blood flow plenty fast through the veins of those fortunate fans lucky enough to be here and in the stands down at St. Louis the latter part of the week. The Gleason crowd began to gather outside the park two days back and this morning at 4 a.m. Oh, that's an awful hour to be up. I saw 5,000 expected police rights waiting more or less patiently for the gates to open. They were a good nature crowd, turning jokes. Here and there, playing cards, sleeping in blankets, or even in newspapers, those who were not fortunate enough to have blankets. Even a bit of a trap shooting game was going on here and there. Teddy Annie was indulged in. The weather coming into Detroit last night on the American Airways was just a bit threatening. It was very thick up above. Our ship even had a touch of difficulty uh, coming in because the haze was so strong. But it's okay now. The weather remains at most of the morning, and it looks as the thought might possibly rain. But about 11.45, the sun just managed to cheat through the haze, and although it's not clear now, all thought of rain has been dispelled. That's over for today. That fall pitching is going mighty well in the semi-haze of today. We're situated just off first base, on top of a double-deck stand, and although we're 150 feet off the power line, was so high up that the bag looked like a short jump from here. The series this year resembles last year's draft, being that both teams are under first-year managers. Frankie Frick, the old Ford of Flats, took over the Cardinals after mid-season last year. And Mickey Mike Cochran of the Tigers came to Detroit after last season, from Philadelphia, of course, where he has been under Connie Max for many years. Both are playing managers, of course. Grinch covering second for the card and still losing his cap now and then as he shagged those Texas leaguers into right and center field and Stockton, who is one of the greatest catchers ever to wear a chest protector. Both men know baseball from start to finish. They're no newcomers to the game. They're in there and know every move. And both are known as players who are at the best when the going is tough. As money players, there's no choice between these two managers, and they're the best there are. I don't believe there ever was a series. Some of more color and spice and pep with that Kepper Martin, Medwick, Rich, and the Dean brothers. Dizzy and Daffy for the five. And Cochran, Carrington, 
Greenberg, and Schoolboy Rose, for the Tiger. Detroit is more hungry for this series than any city in my recollection. Thirteen years in the microphone and World Series. The city has been eating, sleeping, and talking World Series for weeks. And has packed every available inch of the stand. Just about every available inch now. They're coming in and droves, and it won't be long before we won't be able to see a seat in the place unoccupied. And to cheer the Tigers on to victory. Opinion as to the outcome seems more even than I've ever seen it before. The fine band has been entertaining the child, and Al Check has produced a lot of laughs with his antics as leader of the band and playing the clown at third base, as only Al can do it. A model song keeper has just been manicuring the base pass, and the foul lines have been newly chalked, and all is ready to grow. Well, the crowd color in, from the visual angle, is not quite what we have seen at time. The reason of that being, of course, is because rather chilly today, men that have on their overcoats and hats, you don't see any white shirts out today, and the ladies are done up in their furs and coats. So the color is just a little bit trapped through the sand as it is through the sky. But the incentive to come to this series is there just the same. The umpires today are, at the plate, Geisel of the American League. At first base, that grand old timer, Bill Clem of the National League. By the way, way back in 1909, since that Detroit won its last pennant. Not a World Series, but a pennant. And Bill Clem, way back there in 1909, was one of the umpires of that series. In fact, he's the only one of the four umpires who worked at that time who is alive today. At second base, Reardon. That will be his first. At second base, Reardon of the National League. And at third base, Owen of the American League. And in just about seven minutes now, they'll be ready to go. Those are the umpires. That's the way they're lined up. And as you know, the umpires are quick each day through the series whether it goes four, five, six, or seven games, and they go clockwise around. In other words, the man on third today will be at the plate tomorrow. That is Owen. And they switch from day to day, going with the clock. I believe that Dizzy Dean and Al Crowder will pick. I think that that's official. Mickey Cochran has said he will pick Al Crowder. And Frankie Frick... Thumb through with Dizzy Dean. Dizzy, you know, has been hanging around Frankie Frick's folktales for the past three days. Every time he got an opportunity to speak to his manager, he'd say, Frick, can I pitch the opening game? Frick would look at him and say, maybe. Well, that didn't do Dizzy much good for a while, I suppose, because he just didn't know where he was standing, and he was just wild to pitch this game. But finally, Frankie came through and allowed his great age, who is who has, with his brother, practically pitched the pennant for the National League team, the Cardinals, will pitch the first game. Shaw for Detroit, who was one of the outstanding teachers of the year uh, to bring Detroit the flag, will not work today. He will probably be picked in the second game, possibly against uh, Daffy Dean, Dizzy's brother, uh, tomorrow afternoon. That is schoolboy row. But today, it almost certainly will be Dizzy Dean and Al Crowder. Dizzy Dean for the Cardinals, Al Crowder for the Tigers. And now, let me go through the lineup for the afternoon. I believe this to be correct, and if there are any changes, we will give them to you when they are announced. We'll give you the visitors first. St. Louis Park. Leading off, Mark, Deborah Mark, who simply walked away with a World Series in his pocket several years ago. That was, in my experience, the greatest one-man effort I have ever seen in baseball. Deborah Mark, third base for the Cardinals. Rock Rock, R-O-C-H-R-O-C-K, right field. Frankie Trick, manager, second base. Medwick. In the cleanup position, left field. Medwick. 
Collins at first base. Yelancey, E-E-L-A-N-C-E-Y. Gatchy. Orsaki, O-R-S-A-T-E-I. Center field. Jurocha, D-U-R-O-C-H-E-R. Shortstop. Jurocha, one of the greatest of all shortstops in the field. Not a terrific batter, but a marvel down there getting in the way of those balls and getting them over the first base. And Jerome Dean, pitching for the Tigers. Detroit, White, is the leadoff man. Center field. Mike Bachman has put himself in the second position. Mike used to get third and fourth, you know, cleaning up. But now, he is up in second place. D O C H R A N E. Catching. Scherringer. D G H R I N C T R. Marvelous batting boy that plays second base for the Detroit Tigers. And one of the real reasons why Detroit is up there and in this series today. Greenberg. Last year, just a rookie practically. Just another first baseman. And today, one of the big soft dogs. Baseball star. Greenberg, first safe. And then that old Washington boy, whose acquisition was one of Cochran's big fine steps, big year. Bruce Gosler. You know, we've seen him playing World Series in Washington these many years. Now he's over with Detroit because Cochran was wise enough to pick him up. Rogel at short. R O G E double L. Short. <laughs> Cohen at third base. O W E S. Fox in right field. And Al Crowder will do the picture. The umpire, you will repeat. <laughs> There has been a change in the umpires, in their position. We gave you what we had, but there has been a change. Owen is behind the plate. Clem, Bill Clem, at first base. Shizo, at second base. And Reardon will be over at third. And now, it's just two and a half minutes before this ball game is going to begin. And I'm going to turn this microphone over, let the boys who are going to work inning by inning talk for a moment just to loosen up their whistles a little bit so that they'll get started on the right foot. First, Ford Bond will speak to you for a moment. He will turn the microphone over to Tom Manning. Ford Bond of New York and Tom Manning of Cleveland. We're going to call him his nickname, but I believe we shot calling him that nickname. Tom, what do you think of that? Anyway, Ford Bond will speak. Then Bob will speak to you. And boys, we're going to start again. Tom Manning. Tom Manning will work four and a half innings, followed by Ford Bond for four and a half innings. And now the umpires and the managers are about home plate. Dropping the situation over for a moment. Dropping up certain ground rules and getting ready to go. Field is cleared. All that's out there in the field are a few fielders with lying on the ground. And come on, Fort, take his microphone. Fort on. The Detroit yeah. team is ready, all set and anxious to open what I think will probably be one of the most colorful series in World Series history. General Crowder will open for us against the St. Louis Cardinals. We're meeting a great ball club, and I hope that we can beat them. Congratulations on the great fight you made in this uh, past season. Thanks, the Mickey. The same to you. Lots of luck to you. Thanks. You're a great fellow and a great manager. Okay. Lots of luck to you. Thanks. Brother Jerome, better known as Dizzy. This is my brother Paul Dean, better known as Daffy. We're both, We're both full of ambition against those Tigers. How does your arm feel, schoolboy? Just fine. I think it's going to be all for this series. How are you? Fine, thanks. How you, Paul? Fine. How you, schoolboy? Just fine. Blackie boy's got me in the middle. What are you looking at, Diz? 
I'm looking at it. Tell me around here that there's a bunch of tigers around here, and I can't see nothing but kittens. Take a look, Daffy. <laughs> George, you're right, dear. They do like, look like a bunch of kittens. History. What are you going to do to the Tigers, fella? Well, I hope that I can beat them today. I think it's a great honor for me to pitch the opening day of the World Series of 1934. The boys are just about ready to go out and start this man's ball game for the first game of the 1934 World Series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Tigers of Detroit. There's the national anthem. Let's listen. <laughs> Just a moment to those Dean brothers, but yeah, uh, St. Louis won 12 or uh, 15 shutouts this year. The Dean scoring 12 of them, and the balance of the staff three. Boys, listen to that crowd here as the boys go out into the field. Uh, Jerome won seven of those 12 shutouts, and all five. Balance of the Chad, Lee, and Paul also had his great no-hit game against Hooper. Now, the boys are out in the field, and in just a few moments, this ball game is going to start opening the series, and my old pal, Tommy Manning of Cleveland, come on in. Thank you, Graham. Good afternoon, everybody. We're over at Nathan Field, Detroit, today. What a season this is on a baseball. What two teams we have out here, the color, color galore, the team brothers. It's Chizzy and Daffy. It's that kind of a series, if you please. Over here in Detroit, for the first time in the history of the World Series, we've been postponed for 20 minutes to allow the crowd to get in. Each fan there are so excited, so enthused over the expectancy of the color in this World Series, that they have all taken a good nature. The fans have just left the field. Detroit Tigers are out there now, passing the ball around. Hello, Black Hill. The day the game came throughout the season. It's so black, it'll look like cheap as coal. And that's kind of a right-hander, formerly of the Washington Senators, Joe Crowder, who picked a great kid for the 1933 performers in the World Series. Perhaps due to overlook, he is out there, being acclaimed again by these enthusiastic Joy Judas. Let it to Mike Popper, one of the greatest catches of all time. Look to the receiving. Here's the last bit of the official lineup again. Well, thank you. Popper Martin at third. Jack Walpaw in right. Manager Prince at second. Sedwick in left. Holland, at first. Gilancy, Cat. Horsati, center. Garocha, George. And the great Jerome Dizzy Dean in the box. They say he's dizzy. I wish we was dizzy too. Morty Choice. White, center. Manager Coughlin, Cat. Garinger, second. Frank Greenberg, first. Two Starling, left. Billy Rogel, what? Owen, third. They say he's the most improved player in the nation this year. Fast in right field. Fowler, pitching. Up higher, pitch Owen, behind the back. Fowler, back first. Geisel, back second. Ridden, back third. The umpire has called play ball. Papa Mark, the right-hand hitter, is stepped into the box. A great cheer goes up. General Fowler takes his glove off. Stands back to the last side. Flips out for its better field. Jazz is out being resolved spotted. Dale General steps up on the rubber. It won't be long now. Cochran's left behind the plate. Papa Mark taking his aim, swinging that old bat up and down. In that Louis Gray uniform with Cardinal Red. 
Bring the bat up and down. Up goes Fowler's arm. He whirls Jerry's arm. The first hit. It's a Fowler down third base. Owen has it. He whips it across the diamond. and she's going. Watching the bat. Run away. The first ball hit. General Fowler taking his throw. Wind up. Hit that ball over the heart of the plate. Chuckle box. The right hand batter swung on too hot. Fowler and stepped over. Down to Rocky. Picks it up. Off it over to Big Tank Greenberg. The Jerry's is on. The Cardinals in the first inning. What up? Nobody on. Jack Roper, formerly of the American League, playing a great game in right field for the Cardinals. He passed a left-handed, reputed to be a very fast runner, one of the fastest in the major league. The pitch, it's outside, ball one. Jack Roper makes a slow, easy game at the pitcher, and here it comes. And there it goes, a high fly center field, out of the center field, and White is waiting for it. He has it, two and out. Buck with that old, Mike took that old ball, and it's down to Garriger, Garriger to O, Greenberg to O, to Greenberg. They almost lock each other down, and Greenberg bottles the ball a moment, crosses it over to General Crowder, and they're ready to go. Mikey Quick, Mikey Quick, the manager of the Cardinals, a left-hand hitter is that, 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 uh, he's a quick hitter, you know. And here it is, strike ball, a fast ball, right down the old alley. Mike one on the Cardinal manager, Mikey Quick. Two men out in the first inning. Nobody is on. The wind-up. The pitch. A hot cling, but it declared a ball. And the count is ball one and strike one. Mackie first is all set to land. Make that one fill out on a scary speed as they go. And now the count of the Fargo managers. Ball one and strike one. First steps out of the box. Get the pitch to dirt. Knock the duck off the shoes and he's back in there again. The signal. And the wind-up. Ball one, strike one, two out, nobody on. Here it is. He swings at the ground ball. The ball in. Backs out. It's over near short. And goes over. He sees the ball. But is unable to make a play. And I'm sure it is a base hit for the Cardinal manager. Frank, he quick. That was a ground ball. It is short as an error. That ball was hit. Using left of Bravo, he leaps over court, batted it over court, shortstop, a little girl was running over to back him up, he batted it over to the regular shortstop position, and was unable to make a play. Hit it scored as an error. On Bravo, the third baseman. Oh, he has Joey Ledrick up, hits the first ball, fixes the base hit, in the left field, brings his ball in second base, Dawson receives sees the ball, puts it in the low gala third, takes, stops the second, a single. Now we have runners on first and second. Frankie Fish is on second. Redwick, Frankie Fish on second. Redwick on first. He went out in the first inning. And Rip Holland, who has hit 35 home runs this year. For the St. Louis Cardinals, the left-hand batter is up. General Crowder, a right-hand pitcher, is in the box. Get his signal. Looked out for second. And here it is. Hit the first ball. Hit the side of the center field. What? His pack is up. He's under it. He has it. Ball for the Cardinals in the first inning. No runs, one hit, and one error. Runners remain on first and second at the conclusion of the first half of the first inning. The mid board. That was a tense moment with two men on, two out, and Rip Collins is back. Man who has slapped out 35 homers this year. Here's the way that inning worked. Martin came up, matched the first hit down the third, he was out of a fast throw from Owen over to Greenberg, reached the first backer just about five feet. Before the runner got there. Then Rock Rock. Rock Rock came up, slapped the second pitch on a high fly, sailing way out into center field with a hard driven ball. But Jojo White was there when it came down, and two men were out. Frankie Frisk came up. Frankie Frisk drove one hard to the left of five oh and down on thirty came out, got his hand on the ball, and this went on down to first with base on Owen Garrett. So we're calling it Owen Garrett, base down on first. Medwick came up, slapped the ball hard off the left field. Chris moves on down to second. That's why he wants to circle it. And Bruce Wildman ran it off the end of third base. Collins came up without on that fly. But here is the Tigers have the first and Tom Manning to give it to you. All right, Tom. Jojo White, left-hand hitter, center feet of the Tigers. In a white uniform with the blue letters. He's up there. The first six of 50 teams. Strike one. Ball. Up burning. Fast ball. No high. Right down the old alley for a call. Strike. Dizzy Dean is out there, wearing that big smile just as confident as he has been in his moody victories in the half season. The wind up, a wall, green wind up, and here it is. A hit ball is rolled inside. Ball one and strike one. It's the last half of the first inning. This old World Series ball game at Hazel Field is 
Yours leading the description through the national broadcasting company. Ball one of the on the pitch. Ball two, a fast ball. This is the outside corner of the tape. And the foul on the left hand hitter, Joe Joe White, is ball two and right on. He is a leadoff man of the baggage. <laughs> The last to catch it, and here's the pitch. Ball three, the fast ball. There is so so back, and wins to the second. And the top of the first title winner, all three, and strike right one. Boy, oh boy, that busy game certainly has plenty on that ball. Here it is. It's a strike. Right down the middle, and the top, and so so back is ball three, and the strike two. This is being swinging on kick on, so far as it's come down almost to his knees. What a big fella he is. Here's the wind up, the foul is being seen. Here it is. Eric Hayes, it's a foul ball. Down short to Russell Hackett. He took the column. And Georgia White is out. That was so hard to read into the gap. The Russell is taking a ball about so high. And a nice throw right over shoulder high to Allen on the Badgers that just ran out in the first inning. Craig Tuckett gets a great hand as he steps to the plate. Manager Mike Hoffman in his first year as manager of the American League. He bats a left hand and here's the first pitch to Mike. Ball one. A pass ball is low and just a little bit inside. The last half of the first inning. No stalling yet. One man out. Nobody on. Hoffman up. And it's ball one. Izzy D, right hand of the second. Jelassie catches. Here it comes. It's a ball. A pass ball is outside. That was close. And the count on Mickey Cochran is to a loving. Okay. Nice work as it's close to the first, Baker at third. One out, nobody on. Hall to the pitch. Wait, Hall. Half of the nice fast one over the plate. Well high. Now the count on Manager Cochran. Hall to and strike one. Charlie Callinger, the Tiger second baseman, hanging around home plate. The pitch. He swings. It's a crowd of the first. Which is down on his knees. He comes up out of first. Which is hard. That was a hard ground ball. Manager Fritz. No see. He stumbled momentarily, but came up with the ball. Walked over to Collins. And Cochran is out. Now we have two in out. And nobody on. Wally Gallinger, one of the greatest second baseman of all time, gets a great hand as he steps to the plate. It's a great marvelous ball here for the Tigers. And he gets a great hand as he steps up to the batter's box. He's also a left hand hitter. Now he had a great battle on this year, you know, for the batting leadership of the American League. The first pitch, it's a strike call. Now the character, he lets it look that first one over. Dizzy Dean is in the box, you know, General Thomas for Detroit. Last half of the first inning, two out, nobody on. No score yet. Here's the lineup. Strike one of the hitter. Ball. After the third ball, it hits the outside corner. And Dizzy Dean takes his head just a little bit. And now it is ball one and strike one. Two men out. Last half the first inning. And nobody on. Here's the wind up. One and gone. The pitch. It's a sweeping hook ball with a blow inside. Garrett just cuts back. Ball two and strike one. Garrett just goes quite a bit away from the plate on that last pitch. The sort of a change of plate offering. Now it's ball two and strike one. The wind up. The pitch. He swings. It's a great set. I'll get the left field. All out there is received by Charlie Medley. He hooks it into the Leo Thoreau's left second. And Charlie Gellinger is on first base. A hanging single to left field. That is the first Tiger hit of the World Series. Hank Greenberg is coming up. Hank Greenberg is a big Tiger first back of a right hand hitter. Mike and Chris has left his position for second. And his left in. He's back with Dizzy Dean. Now he's going back again. The last half of the first inning. Two men. That's how it's tired. Charlie Gerringer on first. And Hank Greenberg at that. Yeltsin is a moving back. Running for the pitch. And here it is. It's a ball ball down third game. Pepper Martin comes up with the third. He is out of the first. That was a beautiful play by Pepper Martin. He went down to his left. Leaped for the ball. And threw it over there. Just off the ground. to rip out of the first base. And that is all for the Tigers. And it's the first inning. No run. One hit. Matt Dolero, Gerringer, was left on the base. Come in for it. White came up to start off the Tigers' five this ball game here in the first inning. White bang won a hot one down to Leo DeRocher, who took it fast, got it over to Rip Collins on first, and one man was gone for the Tigers in the first inning. Stockton then came up. Mickey Patrick. 
So I couldn't bang one down the brace. Chris stumbled, went down hard after the ball, but came up with it and winged it over to Collins. Then two men were out. Two out, nobody on. Geringer came up. Geringer got a hold of Leather and lifted it up on a drive into left field. Single over the shortstop head, and he was down on first. There he was on first with big Hank Greenberg. Hank Greenberg, a mighty man with a bat, up there to face Dizzy Dean. He drove one down to Martin. Martin took it prettily, swamped it over to Collins, and they were down. Four men up, and three out for the pass in the first inning. No run, one hit, no ever. And two big zeros hang out there the scoreboard in right field. A zero for St. Louis, and one for Detroit at the end of the first inning. Going into the second now, here is Delancey coming up the bat for the Tigers and Tom Manny to give you the second inning. All right, Tom. General Sala, that right hand center is out there in the box to wind up the first six to Delancey. The left hand hitter. Hits the first ball, six to the long, hopes the left field. Goss on the track with the barrier. Under it, he has it. That is a long drive about five feet from the barrier when he's left field. He has the back and up taking the ball. He then puts over to Jojo White and center, right to Rogel. To Owen, to Gallagher, to Greenberg. And now, General Sauter again has the ball with his glove off, battling the ball in his bare hand to get the bit of rosin, and we're ready to go as well. Oh, Scotty, Arnie, oh, Scotty, the center fielder, thank you, Scott, over the back, and he's just up. Hit the first ball, pitch, it's a hit in the left field. He was the left hand batter, and he tracked the first ball, pitch. A line drive in the left field, the ball is received by Kunsasa, who returns it to Rochelle at second. It's a single for Arnie, or that. That's the second hit of the afternoon for the Cardinals. Left wing, Rio DeRosa up. Rio DeRosa, you know, back to right-handed. Here's a little short stop of the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals is pitching and Cochran catching. Here's the first pitch. It's a slight call. General, put that one in there. Let her high. Let her high. It's full under the chair. Here's the next pitch for Rio DeRosa. All one. That was a hook call. That was a little bit outside, and the count on the Rocher is all one and slight one. In the second inning, one man out. And the peg over the first. Nothing happened. Sada has the ball again in the box. Here's the Rocher batting, all one, slight one, the pitch. He pulled at the post high out of the center field. Jojo White backing up a bit under it. He's waiting, and he has it. Two men out in the first half of the second inning. The five of batting. And we still have Orsani on first base. Now, your own Shizzy Dean is coming up. In the hotel lobby this morning, Will Larson. He needs more introduction. Then how's your old arm, Shizzy? Just well, it's okay, says the white don't want me to pitch, but golf calls. But there's a ball game, and then he's pitching to become a uh, pitcher. And there he is. He's in there pitching. <laughs> and here's the first pitch to Shizzy. He swings at the foul back. Like one. And with Dizzy Dean, uh, Will Rogers, how he was getting along, particularly over Russia, he said, well, Dizzy, they had me play in the outfield. He said, I didn't do any pitches. But they had a great time together, that two great fellows, Will Rogers and Dizzy Dean. <laughs> All right, it's the last half of the second inning, you know, two men out. Oh, Scotty on first, and the count on Dizzy Dean with Mike Watson. Here's the pick. He clings at the fouling ball, down there, second with Darryl, has it, goes to Geringer. And Geringer clocks the ball, and everybody is safe. That was a ground ball, and Willie Wilkell crossed through, he went over to Geringer, and Geringer dropped the ball, and now we have runners on first and second. We've been delayed a moment while Dizzy Dean is putting on that slight Marco running. <laughs> the fight was all right, and Charlie Geringer, the second baseman of the Tigers, is charged with Sam Arrow. Now we have our daddy on second. Dean on first, two men out, and Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin, the star of the series of 31. Boy, will you ever forget what he did in that series? He stole basically, he hit home run. He climbed up on the fence, his flag well flies, and here he is again. Pepper Martin, he's going to get it in the box. He was in there, but Tyler, Tyler was ready to pitch, and he jumped out of the box quickly. And now ready to go again. Pepper Martin is up the first pitch. Foul oh, back, like one. Pepper Martin wasn't kidding on that play. Let that top go from way back that time. No score is yet. First half of the second inning. Well, Scotty is on second. Dizzy Dean was on first. And Pepper Martin is up to two out. That's one. General Crowder, right hand of 50. Captain Patton. Here it comes. 
It's a foul back of a mark. Look the bat slip out of his hand. And it flies still over to the boxes in back of small plate. Now we have strike two. Five half of that. We have one of our first and second to know most stories yet in this first row series ball game. The Laban Field Court. Half of that was back in the box again now. Two to count. Here it is. It's a bounding ball down third base. It's a big hop. Hold has it. Here's the throw. And the throw is wide. And everybody is safe. The bags are rolled. Harbour took that ball. He tapped up on it. Then threw it wide to Hank Greenberg. Pulling Greenberg off the bag. And now we have a back loader, as it were. And two men up. That is an error for third base for Bowen. That is a third error of the afternoon for the Tigers. And here's a picture of Steve Brown. Ernie Orsatti is on third base. Jesse Jean is on second base. Papa Hawk is on first base. And we have two men up. Jack Rockrock is coming up. Last time up, Rockrock hit a fly ball to Jojo White in center field. She got the left hand of the pitch. More run. Crowder's hook ball was low inside. I should gaze around at the bullpen. Nobody is warming up as yet. It's the first half of the second inning. The Cardinals have the flag folded. Two men out. The wind up. And here it is. Strike ball. Oh, that was a fast one. No high. And now the count of. Jack Warbrock is up there hitting it on the flag folded. Two men out. And the flag below. Here it is. It's a drive in the center field. It's a base hit in the left center field. Orsani is coming in. Dean is rounding second. Third base coming in. The throw is to the infield. And Papa Martin goes to third base. Two runs score for the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the picture again. The bags were loaded. Jack Walcott was up there. And he hit a line drive to the left center field. It was a single. And it came to Orsani across the plate. Also, Dizzy Dean. Papa Martin went to third. Walcott got the first. And it is now St. Louis 2, Detroit nothing. Runners on first and third. Two men out. And Monica Flanky first. Coming up. Blackie chops the left handed to know. With a right hand put to in the box. The pitch gets a foul. Strike one. That was greatly attacked by Jack Rothrock, a lying drive at the left center field. For a moment it looked like extra base, but Jojo White was over there, took the ball, honors the second hop, and looked at him at a little girl holding Rothrock at first. Here's the pitch. It's a long foul upstairs. Strike two, off back to first. First half of the second inning, you know, St. Louis Cardinals two, Detroit Tigers, nothing. Back to first, the manager of the Cardinals who stepped out of the batter's box for a moment. Knocked the dust off his shoes, and now he's back in there again, with runners off first and third. Two men out, first half of the second inning. Crowder takes a split, and here's the pitch. It's too high, outside. Ball one. If the count's two and nothing, Crowder elected. To try to get pitch to swing it a higher fast one outside. And now we have strike two, ball one. That's the pitch. He was batting left hand of the afternoon against the right hand slant to Bob. Another one, first and third. Two out. There it is. He swings at the down ball, carries it, covers the ball, receives it quickly, drops the Greenberg, and takes it down at first place. That is a nice play by Charlie Gallagher. That ground ball between Challenger and Greenberg. Challenger coming over, fired to his left, knocks the ball down, home of the home of Stanley, turned all the way around, and it's off to Greenberg to get his first half first place. Come in for it. What he happened that inning? The Lancer came up, banged the fly up to left field, Garden right up against the wire, and took it there was one jaw. Or Saturday came up, left one between the third base and the short stop from the left field for a single. Then Bureter. Bureter next to that, a man on first, one out, and he left one up. It goes to White in center field, and two men were gone. Two out of Van Off. Dean came up. Dean drove one down, Rogel got a step off second base off to Derringer. Derringer made an error taking a throw for Rogel, and her fatty would throw the second smart at that. Two off, two up, a bounce down to third, and retreat at first on Owen's wide throw to first base. Ross Rock came up. Lamb one out into center field, scoring off Sally and Dean. Martin went to third. Ross Rock was on first. First was the next man in the batting order. He wrapped one down to Geringer. Geringer got a high time handling. It was a bad ball to handle, but he got a hold of it. Picked up off the ground. Got it over to Greenberg, and the fast retired. Two runs, two hits, two errors. 
Here is Ruth Johnson at bat in Detroit half of the second in Tom Manor. The first pitch to Gotham, a change of pace off in the high outside. Who's Gotham, you know, is a left hand hitter. Ball on. Sissy Dean is at the box for the Bingo is Cardinal with Delancey behind the bat. Gotham for the first level of the last half of the second. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. A nice hook ball that comes over just above the knees and the count on Ruth Gotham is ball one and strike one. Gotham is up. Rodell hanging around home like the pitch. It's a ball inside. And it's out on Gosling. Ball two and the strike one. Gosling pulling away from that one. Lizzie Dean had plenty on it, too. This is Lizzie Dean said that Jerome would not pitch this afternoon, but apparently Jerome won up. It's a high foul. Almost up in the third deck behind home plate. Another count on Gosling. Very two and two. Gosling leading off from Tigers. In the last half of second inning. He's <laughs> charged with batting, and Billy Rogel will hit next. Two and two. Dizzy is taking a little more time at the moment. Now he's ready to go. That's a long wind up, and here it is. It's a base hit in the left field. Sedwick retrieves the ball, passes it in there to the other road to the second, and it's a one base shot for two shots. Sasson took a hold of a high fastman inside and drove it to left field. It's a hard hit ball, and Joey Ludwig handled the ball very neatly out there in left field, returning it to DeRosa and holding guards for first. That's the second hit of the afternoon for the Tigers. Billy Rogel is up. You know, he's a twist hitter. He backs him into left or right handed. That's Billy Rogel. He's hitting left handed this afternoon. <laughs> Billy Rogel is up there, and the count is strike one on Bill Rogel. There's a long lead wide up again of Dizzy Dean, the pitch. Strike swinging. Strike two. That ball is up around the peak of the cap. Billy Rogel, right close, high was, and he took a murderous cut out of his head. Strike two on Rogel. Last half the second inning. St. Louis Cardinals, two. Tigers, nothing. Nobody else. Garth on his arm first. Here's the pitch. It's a ball outside. Apparently, that was a pitch out. With a count, strike two. Galanti whoops far from the outside of that plate. And now the count on Billy Rogel. Ball two. Strike two. And ball one. Ball ball. Hanging around home plate. There's the pitch. The pitch. It's a ball outside. The count on Billy Rochelle, who is batting left handed is Olsen and strike two. The last half of the second inning, the first game of the World Series. From Navis Field, Detroit, to the National Broadcasting Company. Two and two is the count. Strike three. The call to second, a double play. Southland is out, and Frankie Chris was hurt on the play. Dizzy Sheen, everybody was running out the second base. On that play, you know, Coot Southland. Coot Southland was on first base. Southland was off with the pitch. It was a foul strike out, Billy Rogel, and Gar- then Delancey took the ball to first. Frisch took the ball, sitting in on second base. Garza went in hard, and boxed Frankie Frisch down. And now all of the Cardinal players have looked a bit. They dashed out there at second base. The trainer is out there, and they're all bending over Frankie Frisch. He got up and walked about 15 yards away from the second base cushion, and then again sat down on the ground, and as we have heard, he kept coming over towards first base. He was rubbing his left shoulder. The old sincerely hopes that nothing severe has happened to Anthony Quick. Uh oh, Dizzy Dean is out there. Dizzy Dean is patting him on the back and saying something that's smiling and probably saying, Come on, old kid, you can think it better than just because you say it. Who's got the one? Who's got the one in there that time? How does that clear we are sure? But his knee was a little high. Frankie Chris was rather low to take that ball. And Luke Garvin, a knee, bumped into the shoulder. And the next ball, Frankie Chris. And now, as the players are going back to their position, Frankie Chris is up. And he certainly can't take it. He's a great funny player. And that game to the tip ever one did this. That's the manager to think he was Garvin. He's up there now waiting his players to go back to their position. And he's rubbing the right side of his neck near the shoulder. Back to all, 
Put the double play. Gosselin was out at second. Lutell was called out on six. Two men out. Last half of the second. Robot line. And Bob Owens, the great surprise player of the American League. The first base for the Tiger. They said he wasn't good enough for the American League if it swing training thing. But he said he had been a great third baseman for the Tiger. Two one, foul. <laughs> A foul on that particular play. Owen tried to duck away from a fast ball inside. The ball accidentally hit it. That two in the lower deck of the stands and a character to strike two. That was a total fast ball that Owen tried to duck away from. Two men out. Nobody on. Strike two on Owen. A right hand batter. Woody Dean takes a little too long and shooting a ball straight forward. And Owen steps off the top. He's in again. Dean winds up. Strike two to pick. Strike three. He cleans and misses. And that is all for the short fighters in the last half of the second inning. At the end of two innings, it is St. Louis Bartles representing the National League 2. He's great time for the American League. Kevin, forward. Three up and three down. And Goslin came up the goose. Goslin, so the left field of the Tiger. Drove the ball into left field. A pretty single, a clean ringing single. He was down on first. Rogel came up. Rogel came up, one on. Nobody out. Now what up to three and two on him? Goslin. Trying to take a terrific lead off first. Dizzy Dean, 5.1, and dirty attention to the batter. On the next pitch, Rogel struck out, and Dawson was off like a flash for a second. Delancey takes it down to break. Dawson went in hard, and as you heard, break was hurt. But there were two out, a strikeout, and a man out in second, trying to get down there on that third strike. Then Owen came to bat. Owen came up, and the first one was a call strike. The second, he tried to get out of the way. The ball hit his bat, fouled off, and it was strike two. Then Dizzy took it, Dizzy took it, wound up, rammed it over the plate, and he swung hard, collecting a lot of air on the end of his bat for the third out. No runs, one hit, no errors. And here are the class close up with Joey Medwick, Jackie Medwick at bat in the first half of the third inning, and Tom Manning to give it to you with Slaughter taking his place in the box. All right, Tom. That's right, Medwick, you know, is the boy who got the first hit in his blue ribbon event of 1934. His first time up. A beautiful face hit. And now he's coming up for the second time. Slaughter is in the box. You know, for the strike is the right hand pitcher, Coughlin Cassidy. Let it up, and it's ball one. A, a face hit of the lefty in his second hit of the afternoon. Dawson goes over fast. He sees the ball, puts it into work on second base, and Joey Medwick drops it first. Two hits out of two trips to the plate. <laughs> Nothing fluky about the base hits that we are having on either side this afternoon. They're ringing wide to the outfield. And now we have Collins coming up. Collins at all is the St. Louis Marvel first base for the left hand batter who has 35 home runs for the season. The pitch. It's a ball. The hot ball is high inside. It's the first half of the third inning, you know. St. Louis Marvel through Detroit Clubbing. Starting pitchers are still in the ball game. Collins for Detroit. Dizzy D. for St. Louis. There's a stretch. Metric on first. Nobody else. It's a foul. The ball turns off the umpire's chest protector and fouls very rapidly back out to General Crowder. Another count on the ball, ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one. On follows the left hand side of the pitch. He swings it to guard it out first. Greenberg takes it. Goes to a general second. Arden gets the chair. He's in the curve and it's a wild play. Back from work now. And Collins throws to second base. That play, Mavis was on first. Collins with a foul ball to Greenberg. Greenberg puts the ball to Rochelle. Forcing Mavis at second. Billy Rochelle then in trying to complete the double play. Two past Greenberg. And Collins puts the second base. That, of course, will be scored as an arrow for Billy Rochelle. He shorts out. Now we have Collins on second base. One man out. And catcher, he lasted. A left hand batter is up. That was a May 2 order double play. Newport coming up nicely with that ball and throwing it to Rochelle. That is the fourth error of the afternoon for the Tigers. Collins is out on second base in a scoring position. Galassi, the captain, back to left hand and is up on the first pitch. It's a ball. The hook ball is just a little bit high on the inside. All along on catcher, he lasted. There's a stretch. Runner on second to know. Run out. The pitch. It's a ball. A fast ball is too high. And the count on the Lancy. Chip, Rodeo Saturday, hanging around home plate. 
Swallow you a loaf is looking just a little bit slow enough. Here's a pick. The ground ball, down first base, Greenberg fumbles the ball, and down to the seas at the bottom of the plate, and Collins continues down and beats the third, scoring. And it's a ground ball, but Collins goes second base, it's a ground ball, down first base, way, Greenberg allows the ball to trickle through his legs, down the carrier and receives the ball, and Collins down the third base, going at full speed, and put in just ahead of the third, scoring. And it's scored as an error for Hank Greenberg, the Tiger first place. And the score now, the St. Louis Cardinals, three, each like Tiger, seven. Manager Mike Cochran has taken off his chest protector and his cap and has walked out to the box. He's standing out there, bareheaded. Bob Owen, the third baseman, has walked over to the pitcher's box. Hank Greenberg has also walked over to a conference with manager Mike Cochran. They're standing around there now, but General Carter has walked out just a few paces behind the pitching rubber. Manager... Mr. Cochran has been called quite worried by Brick Owen. Brick Owen has waved his mask down, telling the boys to buckle up a little bit. The Cochran walks out again toward the pitcher's box, and he says something to third base from Bob Owen and to first base from Hank Greenberg. Now Cochran is going back behind the plate. Creole DeRocha, the very gentleman, he has picked up Cochran's cap and chest with that. Cap and mask rather than a hand of the two inch. Cochran flips the ball and now ready to go again. Carter stays in the box. Oreo Scotty is up. He hits the first ball, picks the foul down the left field line. He was out there in the field box to make the attempt to get the ball, but two shots and runs over and receives the ball and throws it back into the diamond. Oreo Scotty is up today and it is a foul strike one. St. Louis Cardinals three, Detroit seven. First half of the third inning. Here's the pick. Has it back out for it. Right field. And it is a Hawk comes in fast and takes the ball from high. Goes in the carrier. And now we have two men out. Two men out and Leo DeRocha coming up. Leo DeRocha, you know, back from right-handed. Here's the judge staff for the St. Louis Cardinals. The last all first. Two out. The Rocha hits the first ball, sits at the last he fly for it. Right field with Pete Fox coming over a little bit. He's under it, and he has it. Got a draw for the St. Louis Cardinals in the first half of the third inning. Get in for it. The Cardinals that wake up in the first half of the third. He rammed one past third baseman, Marv Owen, for a single. He was on first. Collins at that. Collins grounded one hop down to Greenberg, who turned, winged it down to Rocha off. That we got a second row there, off through row back to first, and Collins went on down to second when the ball was back to the there on Rogel's error. Back throw. And on second, the Lancey up. The Lancey said one hop down to Greenberg. Greenberg got the ball, took a gooey leg, and he was saved at first. Collins went on in, steering, riding into the half plate ahead of the throw, getting in there, and was all safe. Or Sadie then came up. And the fly out of the right field where Pete Fox was under when it came down, and two men were gone. New Oscar then came up, one on, two off. He left one out the same direction, and Pete Fox had the third foot out. So the score is three to nothing. Two runs for the Cardinals in the second inning, one run in the third, three to nothing, and Detroit coming up with Pete Fox. Irvin Pete Fox, the right field will make those last two out. <laughs> The Tigers coming up first here in their half of the third. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. The high, high ball, back of first base. Collins is back up right on the line. He takes it. One man out. Deep box with a count ball, one and strike one. Except that a little pop fly back of first base. That's it, Collins back up for General Collins is getting a nice hand. from the fans here at David Field as he steps up to the plate. General Fowler, you know, back to left hand. Here's the Tiger pitcher. Left hand batter, last half of the third inning. One out, and nobody on. Jimmy Dean's first offering. Gets it ball strike. A fast ball that was right down the old alley. Strick on, out firing behind the bat. Raised that right hand, indicating a tall strike. Ball. Fast ball is low inside. Sauter stepping back away from the plate. Now the count is ball one and strike one. General Sauter completes the first round of the Tiger hitters. 
Here's the light. Saturday afternoon, go to Detroit. Ball two. Last ball is high. Inside of the count on Richard Slaughter. Ball two and strike one. Last half of the third inning. Tigers, three runs behind. One out. That's nobody out. The pitch. Strike. Ball. This is a clear ball. Slaughter pulled away from the plate. Up the goal. Call to the strike. And the count is two and two. They go with 5 of 3. Detroit Tigers love it. The last half of the third, one out, and nobody out. Jojo White hanging around home plate. The pitch. The high bounder, a top ball. Dean has it. Tosses to Collins, and Carter is out. Carter swung hard at that ball, but popped it. And it was a high bounder about 15 feet high. But Dizzy Dean waited for it, and then passed over to Collins. Now we have two men out. Nobody out. And Jojo White. Better feel of the Tigers coming up. Last time up, right, on and out to Roaches to follow. Here's the first pitch to right. All one. Last ball was inside. Right, hold his back down as if to bump them, throwing Papa Martin, which came carrying in flat. But of course, it was a ball. That nothing further happened. Here's the wind up again. Dizzy Dean pitching. Here it is. It's a ball up and back. Ball one, strike one. Manager Mickey Cochran, coming up next. Back half, the quarter of two out, and nobody on. He winds up, and here it is. Ball two. Two and strike one. Again, J.J. White pulled up that end as if to bump, and that's again, Papa Martin comes coming in. Martin goes back to his position, he sees the dirt out there in front of him. Here's the wind up again. Two and one, the pitch. The change of pace offering is a little bit higher, and it's three and one on Jojo Hunt. On that change of pace offering, it's Dizzy D. He seems to jerk that ball in there. There it is. Strike two, Paul. All right, that was ready fast. Three and two. Jojo Hunt, a left hand batter is up. Fast half the third inning, two out, nobody on. The pitch. Go ahead, he says. Ball four. That's the first talk of the afternoon. Dizzy Dean is knocking his bare head against the glove. And over. Just a little bit of temperament on the part of Dizzy. He's up halfway in for it, home plate. Now he has his gun off. Only with his trousers. Man of the Cardinal and Steelers come in to say, Look at the third foot. He nods his head, holds up his bare hand, and says, Fear not, my man, fear not. Mike Cochran. The manager of the Tigers is coming up now. Mike, you know, is a left hand hitter. We can move in a moment. Delancey, Buckland, that's it gone. They dropped something over there. Now ready to go again. Jojo Wright is on first. Two men out. Back with a left hand batter is up. Dean is back on the rubber. A long crook. Here's the foot. Four one. Back ball. This is Buckland. Doesn't think he's getting out of the way of Buckland. <laughs> Now, Mickey Cochran must be a bad old Bill Robinson. Never had a better foot yet to back him for. Dizzy Dean keeps a paper. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Dave Huggins is being the ball. Kicked it in the third base. Joshua White knocks it second. That is really the first step. This afternoon in this World Series, that the Detroit Tigers have had a real stand to my coach and boy. These 45,000 and upward fans here at Raven Field. But they got loose when Mickey Cochran throws that ball in the left field. <laughs> now we have runners on first and second. Sally Carringer is up, a left hand batter. The pitch, quick one, Paul. Collins oh, seeks over the back of Mike Cochran, but Clyde Perkins, who was coaching at first, doesn't permit a play. He yells at Cochran, and Cochran is back fast. Here's the pitch to Gallagher. It's a call, on first, that's the third, and Charlie Carringer, the batter, that's the second. 
The umpire has called it only a, a foul, and it's strike two. Ball two and strike two. That time, Papa Martin attempts to cross five ball and up by dumping the front down the third baseline. The trap was just a little bit over the ball, and it hits the rubber and fouled it right up at the hitter. Two and two, the pitch. Ball three. Curveball is low outside, not going to get it out of the dirt. And the call on Papa Martin. Ball three and strike two. First half of the fourth inning. The Cardinals three, Tigers one. One down, you know, and nobody out. Here's the wind up. Three and two it is. The pitch. Take three, swinging. That was nice work on the part of Mike Chaplin. A tip by the Cochran was able to hold. So it's a strikeout for Papa Martin. Two out, and nobody out. Jeff Rothrock is coming up. That's the first strikeout for Sauter. Rock Rock is up. Strike ball. Rock Rock pulled away from the plate on that one, and apparently the ball was over the inside corner. Here's the wind up again. Two out. Nobody on, you know. Change the pace off, and you a foul up with fast. Strike two. First half of the fourth inning, you know. Two men out. And nobody on. First game of the World Series of 1934. Here's the pitch. Well, it changed the pace off and seemed like it took a favor to get up there, but too high. And the count, power off rock is strike two and ball one. Here it is. Roy High in two flies. Near third base with Owen Rochelle, deciding over this. Andre Dan Owen will take it. The guy in the car will the first half of the fourth inning. And then, uh, at the end of the fourth of the guys who score, is three to one. Dean came up first, and Dean laid into that ball, swinging hard, and the ball rolled way high, far, and wide. This Dalvin chased him over, it looked him back, to get over, and he went over on the line, and made a wonderful touch and caught that entire 17,000 feet. So deep out there in that left field, quicker section, up to their feet, raising that wonderful catch that Bruce Dalvin made of Dean's long drive in the left field. Martin, Martin then came to bat. He went down on a strike out the third with a tip foul and went into Dutton's glove, and two men were gone. Nobody on, and Jack Ross Ross. The bat then goes right. Is up there at that. He came up in the Boston Red Sox and made it into the regular until he broke his leg. And apparently he threw the game back strong and was purchased by the Cardinals from Columbus during the winter. Played 125 games and hit 350 with Columbus. Got away to a great start. When he first, Ross Rock went out on the fly, and here we are with Bruce Johnson, that's the Tigers, in the last half of the fourth. All right, Tom, man. Strike. It's a strike. Carl, Johnson with all the left hand batter. Dizzy D. Right hand pitcher is in the box for the cart. Here's the wind up again. Johnson, that's the left hand. Carl. So the ball is high outside, and the count. All the juice is well on, and strike one. He told me this morning all the folks down in New Jersey are all screwed in this afternoon. All other fingers crossed for the success of their native son, Bruce Gosman. Oh! That ball is inside. Gosman steps back, raising both arms into the air, and it is ball two and strike one. Graham actually sitting here just marveling at this goofy thing. That's the first time I've seen him, Graham. No, as long as you try to sit here, Tom. Or oh, is it the six? Next hit, it's the ball strike, and the count is two and two. Two charge one. That's bad hitter, you know. Last time up to do single. But the foul up and back, the count on Gosling remains ball two and strike two. The old square over there for that one, and somebody got that ball. There'll be no more World Series for that little apple. Probably have a long, comfortable winter, and somebody got the door. Two and two. Here it is. Guys are hitting. It's a ball. Too high. Guys are all set to take a play like that one. But it's a little bit too high. And out of the corner, three and two. Ball three and strike two. The last half of the fourth inning. St. Louis of the National League three. The Tigers of the American League one. He winds up. And the ground ball. Right off the breaking trick. Fish to Collins. Guys are the One down. Right. <laughs> 
Hershey Bell stepped the back one, took the ball on the race. Third hop, club high, and tossed it over very gently to Rip Collins at first. Now up one man out. And Billy Rocco. Running short stop of the Tigers. Left hand hitter is up. He just looked at her. Back from left or right hand. All on. After busy feet at that ball, Joey yells, Oh, golly. Well, that'd be definitely. Joe Gellin's up. All on. The pitch. High, fly, out the short, left center field. Joey Levitt coming in. He's done it with Ann Hazard. Levitt came in from left field, center court, left center, and took that high fly off Willie Rogel. Two men out. Nobody out. Last class of the fourth inning. Bob Owen is up. Last time up, Owen struck out. He got the right hander. Took the first ball, picked the high fly, short right field. Push backing up. They're all coming in almost with collision, but Chase gets over the ball and takes it. Walk Rock, who was a fast runner, came in fast after that. Holland and Chris were back with Oh, finally, Chris took the ball. That's that. Walk Rock, whirled around on his feet, and barely avoided a collision. That's all for the Tigers of the fourth inning. No one, no hits, no errors, of course. Two bombs. The goose came up there, and the goose was batting J.T., and so was his team pitching to him the same way. The count ran up to three and two. And he banged one down to Frankie Brave, who took it, hit a nice toss over to Collins, and the goose retired the dugout. One out in the fourth for the Tigers. The score three to one against them. Rogel came up to bat next. Rogel. He walked off to the Tigers. He banged the fly into short left center. Metwick came in very fast, and the ducky boy was under it. For the outfit, a pretty shot coming in fast and high from his position. Two men gone, and Marvo in the third tracker for the Tigers was at bat. He drove a fly into short right, and Frankie Briggs went up, stopped very fast in position. Rock Rock was coming in, and looked for a moment if they were going to stumble. Briggs just threw his gap on that and went out after it, and was under it for the third out, retiring the side. One, two, three, Garland, Shokel, and Owen. No run, no hit, no errors. As we go into the fifth inning with the St. Louis Cardinals leading over the Detroit Tigers, three, two, one. Tom Manning, come in here. Here is the Cardinals up the fast. With Frankie Price, the first man up there. Here you are, Tom. Frankie Price is on the left hand side of Crowder and Stockman for the Tiger Battery. A tight ball. That was a nice fast ball. It's over the inside corner on Frankie Price. A pitch. Swings. It's a long fly to right field. Fox is going back to the barrier. And he is under it and has it. That ball was just about three feet from the barrier in deep right field. One man out. Now we have Joey Medwick coming up. Medwick, you know, is also a long distance hitter. So has some tape around his right wrist this afternoon. First pitch to Medwick. Oh, up and back. Right. Joey Medwick has two hits out of some trips to the plate. Two out of two. First half of the fifth inning. Three to one in favor of the Cardinals. The pitch. It's a ball. First ball is high inside, and the count on Joey Medwick. It's all one and strike one. First half of the fifth inning. One out, and nobody out. It took the long drive, deep in the left center field, back, back, going, 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 high into the creatures, out in left field, and it is a home run for Joey Medwick, the little left field of the St. Louis Cardinals. Two dogs on the door for the crack of the bat, but there seemed to be no guard on his line. He ran out the steam fire in left field, but the ball was over the fence for a home run. And now, it is 4 to 1 in favor of St. Louis. There it is. 4 1. Have a book, Brad Price, Joey Metric, and now we have Collins up. That's the first extra base smash of the series. Strike call. Ball one, strike one. Alan Gillow was also a home run hitter, having hit 45 this year. Hook ball is hung outside, and it's ball two and strike one. General Sauer, you know, is in the box for Detroit. Call two and strike one. 
Now on to gut. You want out. Add nobody on. Here it is. Right. Swinging. What a traffic to the battle. Wheeled all the way around. Another count is ball two and strike two. The catcher, Delancey, hanging around home plate. It's a ball back. Tommy be made two and two. First half of the fifth inning. St. Louis Cardinals. Of the National League. Four. Strikers of the American League. One. Snyder in the bat for the Tigers. Buckland behind the bat. Now it's up two and two to six. Change of pace ball is outside, and the count is three and two on Collins. Three and two, one up, and nobody on. Here it is. Ball four, he left. That was a fast ball inside, and it was plenty high. Mike Cochran has just pointed over toward the Tiger dugout now. Black wants someone to go down to warm up. No one has come out of there yet. Well, the echo after the catcher coming up. So that's the left hand batter. Great ball. Probably had a clear ball over the heart of the plate that time. Now we have Collins on first, you know. One man out. So that's the catcher is up. There's a high fly out to center field. Jojo White coming in a few faces under it, and he has it. Two men out. Collins is on first. Tony O'Shaughnessy coming up. O'Shaughnessy it off. The center field of the Cardinals to the left hand battle. Ready to go, you know. Two men out. Collins is on. And the pitch. It's a ball strike. General Crowder sent that one over the inside corner. No. Bow, bow. What's he had? 50 games done. But this, it's a ball. Last ball was too high. That's down. Ball one, strike one. Tony O'Shaughnessy is up there on the left-hand batter. Two men out. First half of the fifth inning. Five holes, four. Five holes, one. Good. That is. He swings, and it's a face hit in the left field. Collins was off with a crack of that bat. Back two thousand, he sees the ball, puts it into Billy Rochelle, and Collins is held at second base. That's the second hit of the afternoon for Ernie Orcotti. Base hit, wide to center, half out, he has singled again. Two hits, out of three times up. That brings Rio de Rocher up. Michael shortstop, a right hand batter. But up twice before, both sides getting fly balls to Fox. He's too white and better field. There's the pitch. Small one. The third ball was inside. First half of fifth inning. Two out. Runners on first, second. Collins on second, or Sadie on third. So those are up the pitch. High fly out for center field. We'll go white moving over into left center is under it, and he has it. That is all for the Cardinals in the first half of the fifth inning. And here is what happened. Frankie Fish was first up. He had a fly ball back to left field. Joey Mudley got a hold of a back one and marked it about ten rows up into a left field bleacher. A fine souvenir for somebody. Tom, with a count three and two, he left. Delancey, fly it out to right and center field. Only O'Connor got his second hit of the afternoon. A single to left. Collins is held at second base. Zerosu then hit a fly ball to the center field. Retiring his side. One run. Two hits. One base on ball. And Cole Ellis. And so we win the last half of the fifth inning. The St. Louis Cardinals four. Detroit Tigers one. Radio friends, this first game of the World Series is being sent to you from the first box. Pat Davis sees we're up in the third balcony, and this is Tom Manning speaking. We've had the pleasure of describing the play-by-play of the first four and a half innings, and it is a real pleasure now, too, that we turn the microphone over to a third bound of New York, who will give you the play-by-play description of the remaining innings of this ball game. What pleasure, third bound. Thank you, Tom. Bill Dean's been warming up Durante down here. Now here's Pete Fox, the right fielder, and the Badgers in there swinging his bat. He's winding up. Here's the pitch. It's to Jimmy. Swings hard. 
And it's one strike on the batter. One strike on Pete Fox right here in the last half of the fifth inning. Score four to one against the Tigers. Pete Fox is up there. He's winding up. He shoots it in. And he drives one high up fly out into short right front first. And Pollins will go back. And he goes out. Pollins takes it just outside the foul line. And there's one gone. Straight and Pollins. And Ross Ross were all coming after that ball. It was sure that one of them was going to get it. And Pollen starts the white soft line after the many yards behind first base for the out. And it's one out. And General Alvin Bowder, the next man, drew up the plate. He's made no appearance down there at the moment. Delancey and Brick Owen are both looking over towards the Tigers' dugout to see where Mr. Crowder is. One gone. One gone here in the last half of the fifth. Finally, Crowder comes out, swinging a couple of bats. Well, he's right on. Now he's taking more to his left and swings him over his shoulder. I believe he'll bring up a... Joel Jack. Joel Jack is coming in to bat for General Crowder. I think he'll have a new pitcher. Joel Jack is taking the place of Crowder. He's an outfielder. I think we can drop in the minor league. He's going to bat for Crowder here. He's coming up there now. That's what the weight was for. Joel Jack, taking his place at the plate now, and Dean with both arms hanging down to his side, looking at the signal. He finally goes up, lines up, shoots it in, and it's a ball. Low to the outside to a right handed batter. Joel Jack picks up his flower, takes over his bat again, here's the pitch. And it's a ball sight. Rick Owen runs up his hand and says it's a strike, Mr. Joel Jack, and it's one and one on Frank Joel Jack. He's run in here to bat for five. Here's the base, he winds up, sits again, and it's a drive deep out into center field. I've got him waiting that it is, and he has it as Ross Ross runs over, gets there just about the same time the ball drives. Or that he has it, and the two men are gone. Joe Jack got it for a stop. Which brings Johnny Joyner White, no Joe White, center fielder of the Detroit side is up the bat. He's out there now, knocking the third out of the field fleet. Goes over, hits his bat, a big black willow. Down on the home plate. The out for Chevy Dean. Swings his back, flying it out just a bit. Chevy Dean takes the ball, takes that line up of his. He was just down across the plate, and it was, wasn't quite across the plate. He was outside to a left handed batter. And it's a ball. Ball one on JoJo White. Again, he sat down on the rubber. Swings his bat up. Here's the pitch. Going inside, and it's ball two. Ball two. Join her right at bat. Here's Dean gets the ball back from Mr. Delancey. Infield is kicking dirt around out here while the team looks in the line three seconds and signals something. They should have. Yes, that's all right. Winds up. And it's strike two. Strike like one, ball two. Ball two and strike one. All strike on Joyner White. Jojo White. Here's the pick. He winds up. And it's three ball. Three and one. Joyner White and Dizzy the pass in. He's a little bit put out about that third ball. Three and one is the count on the batter. And here it comes the whole Fasnel infield in the top two. First, Andrew Blanky Trace and the Ojo Rocher West. Then they're battled now by Rick Pallet and Pepper Mack. Two turns around, crossed the line, late for Rick Pallet. The other has gone back to places. And Rick turns around, stops after his place. Our first base there turns his attention again to the batter, down three and one. Two out. And yes. All of outside and wide. Liner White down on first base. Two men out. And Gordon Stanley, Mickey Batson, the manager of the catcher. Back left and throws right. He's up there at the plate with one arm. Yeah. Here in the last half of the fifth, he scored four to one against his team. Mickey Batson's up there at the plate. He doesn't matter about it. He knows the time. He looks at what comes in, and it's a ball. Oh, a little higher. That's better, but higher, and it's a ball on Mickey Thompson. Going to right down on third. That's the picture in the last half of fifth inning. Four to one, David Fire. Here's a pitch. It wheels over, and it's the ball fight. One and one. It wheels right into the hospital plate. He comes right down the alley, and if he wasn't looking for there, and it's a ball fight. One and one. Two men down, right away on first. He takes a little lead off. He looks at him over his shoulder, but shoots it in, and 
and now it went down the right field, but it went far at him. He used to catch it and feel over it a long spike into the right field, and uh, it moved them down the right side of the fence. It was a hard hit ball, and Joyner White comes back, running, dives in the top of down to his place at first base, and Mickey again gets in the batter's box. It's one and two. One and two at the long strike. Mickey jumped up there again. He's back wrestling on his shoulder. Looking hard down at their shoe. Like a couple of swings. He has his shoulder now turned to the plate. Chanting just a little bit over Joyner White. He's breaking his lead off there. He shoots it down and Mickey swings at it. Lies it down where Frank takes it. Shoots it over to Colin. And there's a man down on second hand. There's nobody down there now. It's Jimmy out. And they retire. And the five notes down on the bat. And here's Tom Hanks. Tell you what happened that inning. He swapped his first up, and he tried to have it a fifth, and he fell off to the hook columns. Collins had to go quite a ways back for that one. Close that. Then was centered to bat for General Spot. Put the top ball on the first one. He tried deep to any of that. Or thought he came over nice in the right center. See to take that down. Those were right, sir, up. And after getting a foul of three and one, she left. Here's a Mike Cochran. He made the first, a bit of a throw. He got a hold of one of two boxes and drove it into the right field. He began to try to slide out there until they lose the far line, then we exceed Clover. Now we're done, four fouls. That's the men, round about 50 fouls. No one, no hit, one day to occur, no hit. It looks as though for Bob Marbury will be the next pitcher that is not official. However, up to now, at the end of the five innings, here is a summary of what the pitchers have done so far. This is D. At the line of the Tigers, one run. Four hits. And the Tigers are finally tipping up the two bases on ball. Five. Twelve, four runs. Six hits. And this is one base on ball. The only extra base of the afternoon is that long, no run, hit the left field pitcher by Joe Mother. There is no pitcher now. Triple Bye Bye. Yeah, remember that. Ladies and gentlemen of baseball, Bye Bye. For several years, during the honeymooning days of the Washington Fathers of the American League, Klein's with that summary came in from Inkin of the bullpen. He saved one of his comrades who were falling in the pitcher's box. Once again, he is in that goal, really cold, as they call it, here in the first game of the World Series. Football Marbury, that big husky right-hander, formerly of Washington, now with the Detroit Tigers, is to pick up the pitcher. He's a right-hander, and the first half of the sixth inning has four balls. Marbury up there, just see it back. Shoots over an offering, and it's Jim Drive off the plate corner. Jim Drive's corner to a right-handed batter, and it's one call on Disney, who is suddenly back. He's at a 246 during the season. Harper winds up, here's a pitch, and he swings hard, and it's one and one on his swing at the offering of Purple Marbury. We come in there to a leading stomach spot who is taking off for a hitter. Swings it in, and he tries one as a single out to keep between the center fielder and the left fielder. It's, oh, oh, it's just the shoe base he's got in there. It looks like a single, but that fielder will get over after it. But he gets a two-base hit, and he's down on second. Nobody left, and Pepper Marshall is running up to the plate to face the new Tiger pitcher. The umpire has Paul's hand for the moment, waving his arms, and the trainer runs out the dugout with the big Arsenal. Fellers, twin breaker. Our full team, he just hasn't gotten that nice two bat. You throw a fire between right and two thousand out there in deep left center. Looks like they get a lot of shoot it in, and he traveled on down to second before anything could be done about it. A two base hit point, and that man you up is John Earl Martin. Look at those names, he's mostly fair factor to find out what the man is. The deal name is. He came to Chicago for Houston for him in 1928. He found out for the time. But in 31, he came back out of the regular job and the regular World Series. You remember the story? He's up there at that. Now he's coming on second. Nobody asked him the first half of the beginning. He swings out the first offering. That is one strike. He collects a lot of air on the end of his back there. With one strike on Pepper Martin, of course. Four to one in favor of St. Louis here in the first half of the fifth inning. Did he beam down on second? They can believe that. Marbury turns around, looks down at him. He's the batter, and he drives one hot over second base out into center field. Dasher cleans it. Here's Dean comes on him to throw him to his front right to Marbury, who ran over two second base to throw him there. And Marbury jumps in, passes to Mickey Stockton. 
Captain Martin is down there off first. He came in with the run on the single out there. Right to see the set it in. Martin Martin is taking place back in the back. Boston is going to be trapped back down and get a nose with Jeffrey Mapp. And we're looking for Jack Rathlap. Jack Rathlap to come to the back. And on first, nobody else. Run in. In the first half of the inning, four to one in favor of the St. Louis Fox. Gets up for now into the batter's box. And he punts one down to the third. The pitcher was seen and shoots it over to first. And he's out. The man going down on a nice back to fight. Man down on second. Got the muscle. Off back. That's a fight for you, Tom. Look down. Five to one. On the home run. Favor the South Lowe's. Back to one in favor of the bus. Back. Kemmer in the fifth. And this side in there in the sixth. It's five to one. And you have Frank Blake. Manager and second baseman. Got the Blake with Pepper Martin down on second. One out. Pitch and a strike on Mr. Frey. Strike one. He's up there again. Now Marbury has that play. Looks around at Martin on second. A pop, pop, pop in. Do way out off the foul line in left field. The third season goes back there to running under it. Oh, and making a three part of a catch up. He went back fast. Lost his chap in the process. Steve came back in and the job gave him a nice hand for a beautiful catch going out fast under that pop, pop, pop foul of Frankie Frey. Out there way back of third. Over towards the left field, Dan Sand. Beautiful catch by my boy. So now, it's two out. Man on second, Pepper Martin. And Joey Metwick. Joey Metwick, the other man, who is in the present camera to get up there to the home plate. To any pitcher at any time. Not just the man on second. Here's Joey Ducky Metwick at bat. Bring that ball, he back right. He swings hard and falls it down. He swung so hard at that offering of my brother. He takes it under Uncle Lockley. Jim goes back, walks around the pitcher's mound, rubbing the ball and looking at Pepper Martin down on second. Five to one in favor of the cars here in the first half of the sixth inning. Here's the offering. He fouls it back high into the upper tier, back of home plate. New ball is given by Pitt going to Cochran, who throws in the Marbury and football is up, wiping it off out there, getting it in the condition that he wipes the pitcher. At the take number 11, just on the back of that pretty white tag of uniform. Comes in, walks in, throws the rubber. Looks around at Pepper Martin on second. He's a busy wind up. Shoot this is off a slow ball. Nice change of pace. It came in, but it was wide. And it falls, ball one. One and two is the count on Joe Ducky Medwick. Down on second base, two out. Go five to one, favor the guy. Marbury watching Martin fast. Turns around, shoots it in, but it was low. And it falls two. Low and wide of the plate. Go right handed back. Harbury gets the ball back. Lofty Vargas drop down onto his grip. Everything hanging up on the strap. Wipes the ball off. Comes in. Looks forward way. Throws it over his right foot. Looks back at Martin. Then makes an offering to Swain. You adjust for the end of it. He would, but nothing's happened about it. And Martin walked the line. Nobody was coming in there at the second base. He knew all about it. He turned his attention about it. Shoots in. And it's again. It's a high foul. Mr. Thompson, not too fast. Well, that's it. Goes into the stand. He can get it. So another ball comes into the ball game. Marbury has it. He's having to wipe off a lot of fouls out there to get him in the condition he likes to put them. And Marbury looks around there. Martin again, who's gone back to the second track there, standing on it. Either Bill Rogel or Marsala Gerrans are paying any attention to it. They're watching you see what Joe Metwood does down there. He swings, heart drives a liner into right field. It's a popman and the runner comes in. Pepper Martin crosses the plate on the throw in ahead of the throw in. He did it. He was that. He should have gotten it. The ball failed out. The fox into the another run in. Now six to one on the single. Which Joe Beckwith drove into right field. A line drive out there with it. Short of what anything that Pete Fox could do about. And there are two runs here. Is any? Now, Beckwith is down on first. He out, he runs in, and James Rip Fallon. James Rip Fallon with the Carter. First baseman at that, always a dangerous man. Thomas Rose a couple of times this afternoon. That he has hit 35 homers during this 1934 season. There's the pitch, wings in, and it's a ball, ball one. Wide of the plate to a left-handed batter outside. 
Who's up Collins up there? Edward down on first. He starts down for second, as they hit nine, hit and run. Drives it hard on the ground out into right field. And he's safe on first. And Medwick is safe on third. He slid in there. He was way ahead. It wasn't necessary, but he hit the dirt anyhow. And there's a man on first and third. Two out and two runs in on this Collins single. He was off with the stick. Nice hit and run. And they worked it. Getting hold of that ball and gliding down into right. The umpire down on second base. Umpire guys will throw these arms into the air. And there's the time. Here's the moment. All the players now, with the exception of Max Greenberg and Charlie Kevin, have walked in to talk to Fred Marbury, and he's leaving the mound. Leaving the mound. And we'll have another Detroit pitcher here. No one out on the wall up mound, but there comes a pitcher running in. We can't see who it is. He just came down the runway. Can't just see who it is. Walking in with a big windbreaker. I take him off now. Throwing it down to the fat boy. <laughs> to tell you who it is, just a moment, who's going to replace Marbury there in the box here in the sixth inning with a score six to one against some of his first ball game here at Navin Field of the 1934 World Series. <laughs> it looks like Baker, but we can't identify him for the moment. Our first here high. <laughs> Hotsett, Elon Hotsett, the Indian, has come in, Elon Chester Hotsett, the left-handed pitcher, has come in to replace Marbury here in the sixth inning. Hotsett, replacing Marbury in the sixth inning, the score six to one against them. Six to one in favor of the Cardinals. Just Fallon is on first, Joy Metric on third, two out. And two runs in here in this inning. Fire half the sixth inning, the first up. Hotchett goes over and takes all the rotten back. Wipes his hands off on it. Turns around and crosses one over to Greenberg for another set of warm up. <laughs> and he turns his attention to the batter, who is William Delancey, the catcher of the Cardinals. He swings Mark, wags a T out. Far into left, you over Gooch's head. It's on the tenth defense. Hit good for two bases, and he scores the runners. He's now held up second off the Dorian, and both Medwick and Rip Collins come in on that two bagger off Phil Delancey. A hard drive over Gooch's head. And now it's eight to one in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals here in the first half of the beginning of the first ball game of the 1934 World Series. Ernie Orsani falls into the plate. He's up there already taking position in the batter's box. Elon hops it. Finally gets the ball back. Wipes his hands off on the right and back. They throw the ball again. Will Delancey down on second. Two out. Four runs in. This inning. Swings and here's the pitch. And it's a call strike. Right straight over. And a 31 but Our party was looking for that time right here at the moment. And the ball goes back to Mickey Cochran. The pitcher winds up. He's a dating swing card that is the grounder down to the second base of Charlie Garrett. And he's out at first. Garrett goes to the first. Out at first. Garrett goes to the first. Hey, runs in. That inning. And here's Tom Patton to tell you a resume of how those four runs happen. All right, Tom. Boy, that was really an inning. Dizzy Dean was first up. After he was drives to listen to one by the crowd, he just took it off and then got a hold of one and doubled to left field. Upper Martin, single center. And Dean scores. He almost missed that third base bag over there. Bob Owens. And up by a rear and had a bit of a conference. And the umpire thought that that size line you or better of busy team to just lick the cushion. Block rock. Made down a sacrifice. My belly to Greenberg. Quick. All out to Owens. This was the, the outstanding feeling play of the day. A great running catch. Almost 40 yards from third base to Bob Owens. The side of third tackle went together. Joey Leverick then came up with a count two and two. Single to right field. Scoring Copper Martin. That was Frederick's fourth hit of the afternoon. Three singles and a homer. A great day's work for anybody. Collins, then, gave perfect execution of a hit for one play. Singles to right field. Leverick went to third. Off step. He plays to Robert. A left hand. Delancey, doubled against the failure in deep left field. High over Garson's head. Leverick and Collins score. That was fine splitting on the part of Collins. Making it eight to one. Orzotti, then bounded out. Geringer to Greenberg. 
Well, at the end of five and a half innings, St. Louis Cardinals with the National League. Eight, Detroit Tigers of the Americans won. The last half of the fifth and fourth bar. The last half of the sixth, I'm just to correct you on a number there for the moment. We have Charlie Derringer up at the plate for the Tigers here in the last half of the sixth. Here's Dean is looking him over. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike. Derringer down there at the plate, hoping to do something here. They're sailing by 8-1 to one as they go into the last half of the six. Derringer first man up here for the Tigers in this half of the inning. And the ball sails over, and it's strike two. Strike two. Fancy. Waves the signal down to Rizzy Dean, walks out, holds up his hand, thinking of what the umpire has called it, running it so that Jesse Illinois gets exactly where he is in relation to the batter. He winds up, shoots it in, and it's a low one, and a ball. A ball on the batter. Winds up and gets another one in, and ball two, and strike two. Two and two. Off oh, Mr. Sally Derringer there. Yes, he didn't wind up, shoot it in, he whams it down to first base. First baseman, and he tossed it over to the pitcher. Dean coming over to rip out, lift out, cut the ball down, picks it up, and Dean coming over fast, gets the cross on him. Got there just early ahead of Charlie Derringer, who was pretty fast on those pins of his, and there's one gone. That's always a beautiful play on the ball, and when the ball dies down to the first baseman, the pitcher comes over, crosses the plate, taking a throw from the First baseman who has gotten it from the batter. It's always a pretty one when it's executed right. And it was a, had to be executed fast then because he was a hot drive which he knocked down. Here's Hank Greenberg up at bat. Here's a pitch. The drive. Hater second base. The line drive. And oh, most fast that he had it. He keeps off the top right. The guy's on deck. It's good to him. He's second base. And he has played the second. It scored as a hit and an error. A hit and an error. He came in fast for that ball awfully hard. It bounded up just about a yard in front when he was trying awfully hard to get it. Hit into the chest, bounded off the edge, chased it. And Hope Greenberg is down second off a hit and an error off center field, Bernie or Saturday. Hank Greenberg is on second, one out. And Goose Goslin, Leon Allen, Goose Goslin. Left field of the Tigers at bat. He bats left. Back left handed. But throws right, you know. Here's the pitch. And he swings hard, goes clear down on one knee, turns clear around. If he'd got the hold of that pitch, but he would have gone places. He gave it all the half that he has. That, believe me, shows by plenty of that. We talked to him last night. He was talking about what big things he hopes to do in the series. All of them had to do that. And he swings hard to can and misses the ball, but he got it a lot of air on the end of his bat for his brother. Good. Now, all the boys on these two teams, Kate Fellows, and Max is successful for what they can all do in the series. Max Greenberg on second, one out, strike two on the batter, Good Goslin in the batter's box. Dean again takes that many deep chance, takes the wiggle to the landing, makes the stretch, winds ahead, and it shoots in, and the little Keaton went down, it gets the Keaton, the short drop in third baseman, and Max Greenberg comes in and scores. He's the one up to get to it, and it's a single for Good Goslin. Both of the bad hats, both. Theo DeRoche and Pepper Martin, both of them trying to get to that ball, but it's just the end for us. A hit for Goose, scoring as she goes in the second, and that makes the score 8 to 2 here in the last half of the pitch in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. William Rodell, Rodell Billy Rodell, the fat net, wears the big number 7 on his back. White side of uniform. Cardinals in their Euro uniform. Is it? White gray with the red figures. Cardinals. Here's the pitch. Two row girl, man on first. And he drives one hot down to the second baseman. Here's shoots it over to first. The man who was out trying to make a double on that. He's just out of that time to get that ball and get it over ripped out and she got the man out. That first is two on. With two driving down on second and they run in. Two men out, score eight two in favor of the Cardinals. Just time for Chris to get that one over to Collins. You get Joe Rogel back. So we have Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen. This year is at 321. He's given an 88 run. He's been doing a lot of good batting during the season. He's up there at the plate now. He's back right. Also, he's got a lot of runners to pick. Then it's the ball on Mr. Marvin James Owen, the third batter of the time. And on second, you out. Ball one on the batter. It has a signal, he winds up in the second of the pitch, and it comes over and it's all right. 
Umpire Brick Owen does that right hand up and out in the gesture of the strike. It's one and one on the batter. Marlon and Owen in the batter's back. Man on second base. He's got one. Here's a pitch. He swings wide, but gets nothing for his trouble, and it's one and two. Ball one and strike two on the batter. Two out. One run in. 82 favor the Cardinals. Shazeen again looks in. He's got a very lazy chance to that signal and winds up, makes the check, and it's a foul. Back of the plate, looping the end to the first tier. Delancey walks about eight or nine feet in front of the home plate. So he delivers the ball back to Shazeen. He draws him down second, taking a lead of about five yards off the face. Looking around, keep anybody paying any attention to him. He views that close up a second base. He's coming in after him. A swing, a hard swing. And here's what the batter fool striking up Marvin Owen. And the side is retired. The score, eight to two in favor of the Cardinals. The answer to Jenny. Here's Tom Maddox to give you a resume if the Tigers have to sit. Michael half of the pitch. One run, two hits, and go on. One error, rather. One run, two hits, one error. Geringer. Not Thomas D. Singler. Single. He took second. Thomas Daddy Tara. Thomas Daddy tried to shoot two shots there. And he was given an error. Goswin. Singles the left field. Scoring Greenberg. Making it eight of two. Ocarrow. He's off. Switch to Thomas. Goswin. What's the shot? Bob Owen. Struck out. Goal at the end of six innings. St. Louis Partners. Eight. Detroit of the American League. Two. You know, folks, the four quarter company. Eight. At the stands, what are listening in? At the show rooms of four dealers throughout the United States and Canada, as well as everywhere else, are enjoying this game. It is coming to you from Navis Field, Detroit. The first game of the Blue Ribbon Classic of 1934. The first two games here at Navis Field, in Detroit, and next three if necessary in St. Louis. Going into the first half of the stretch inning, and here is Paul Bob. Elon has it. Uli Marbury, who had previously taken Crowder's place after Crowder was pulled out. Or a pinch-hitter. Austin is taking place in the box, and the Cardinals are up with Leo DeRocha, the shortstop. First man up there in the seventh inning to start it off. He's a bat taking place in the box. There's a pitch, and it sails in and is called a ball. It's wide to a right-handed batter, wide outside of the plate. The Peacock can feed it back out to Elon. He takes it, winds up. Here's a pitch, and he drives one down to the shortstop. Look, leap in the air, pull it down. Rogel takes it over to Greenberg, and the man is out. That ball to the pass down, and still Rogel gets a nice hand to the fan for leaping in the air, clearing that ball, as it is made a pass down. Kind is out at first, he also retires to the dugout, and here comes Jerome Dick Dizzy Dean, up to the plate. <laughs> Just 23 years old, and the amazement of the Major League. This man, Dean, who won 30 games, lost seven in this past season. He comes up there, takes his place in the box. Ulan Hodge returns his empty. He has his hands behind, both hands behind his back. Down the pole, he assumes and goes, taking the presence and top three. He winds up. Here's the pitch. His wings hard and goes down on one knee. He put all the left he had into that one. One strike on the batter. Swinging. Again, Hodge winds up. Comes down the alley. He piles this one off. And it goes clear high over the whole stand. And this is a high stand here in Detroit at Maven Field. <laughs> Now the clear up over the stand. He's back down to the general strike two on him. After gluffing off the ball now, that's drying off his hands on the rosin bag. <laughs> that's handy, you know. About four. Clean to the fourth side. Winds up. Drives it in and he swings bad at that one. And he has struck out Jizzy B. Two men gone here in the first half of the seventh. He retires the dugout, which brings John L. Pepper Martin up to the plate. Pepper Martin, leadoff man, third batter of the Cardinals. Next man up. So far to Rocher and Dean have been up there and both out. And Martin, the third man up for this inning. Two out, nobody on. Score eight, two favor the Cardinals. Here's a quick. And it's wide, forcing him back on his knees. The batter forcing Martin back on his knees is a ball. Very wide. This man hops it, steps out wide. Swing, round arm, shoots the ball in, and he tries to cut it. But he fouled it off. Hit down there, Brown Mickey tossed his foot. And it's one and one. On Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin goes off. Wets his hand, rubs him down on the dirt. Takes hold of the bat, off his two, almost like Lefty O'Doole does. For the moment, steps back into the batting box. Here's the pitch. 
Say of any drive that pop down to you cross up the road, you'll punch it over to Green Bird this time on your side. One, two, three, three up, and three down for the thousand for seven they lead. Eight to two here, stop and tell you how that happened. <laughs> Boy, we certainly watched two great plays that time. I'm so sure about five on play. Billy <laughs> Rochelle, a better and short stop of the tiger, just third and two brilliant plays. On the Rocher, the first man up. Get up. Long ball, now short. The ball hits up and took a massive ball. The girl leaps into the air, turned halfway around. Came down and whipped that ball over just ahead of the team to Rocher. For a slow play. Dizzy T, down very long to Hartley, took his exercises, free strike. Dizzy doesn't do that very often. And the pitch is what he's tough. But then he just went up there and swung and stuck up. Two balls. Up a mark. Then hit it back down. Between the shortstop position and the second base bag, Rogel went over, came up with that ball, a hard smash, and fought the green blue. No run, no hit, and no error. Dolly up for that old seventh inning stretch. Hazard stretch, see the way. Takes a stretch between the first half, the last half, the seventh, when we are in either pack. So, if you're rooting for the Cardinals, go ahead and stretch. If you're rooting for the Tigers, go ahead and stretch. The last half, the seventh, busy team, stretch again, Eric Ford. He fought the spot. Ball comes sailing in. It's a cold strike. Right dead over the heart of the plate. The battle wasn't ready for it. And it's a cold strike on the spot. Score. Eight to two in favor of the Cardinals in the last half of seven. He swings out the next one. Drives a high one. The Lansing cock up and smash goes back in. It's a ball. It's a long time coming down. Some jump. Plunks into the big net. And there's one gone. Irvin Fox. He blocks the right fielder. The Tigers is off. He retires to that job. After Lansing takes that pitch. A ball. A right foul back of the plate. A very, very high one. Dean walked off. The pitcher's mound again. Galanti gets his mask on and just he's trying to fit constantly over the years. And here is Elon Chester Hawkshit. That's that is pitcher and he back left. He's up there to take his place in the batting order. He winds up. Here's the pitch. He tried to punt, but he missed the ball and he strike one. The bat got away by and rolled halfway off to the pitcher's mound. <laughs> he tried to punt that one, lost his hold of the grip uh, on the bat. And it's strike one. Strike one on the batter. Has it. One out. Nobody on. Last half of seven. Score eight, two, they were the tie. Ball close over, and it's called ball one. He was outside. Way wide. That changed the pace, but couldn't get it over the plate. One and one on the batter. Nobody on. He swings the next one, drives it down to shortstop, two or two. Bags it over to first, a nice fast play. Ball got there just ahead of Hodges, and two men are out. Two men are out, and Joyner White, the head of the batting order for the Detroit Tigers. The American League champion from 1934. <laughs> the first game of this 1934 World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals. Join the White's back, 4 8 to his favor of St. Louis. Two men out. He winds up, here's the pick, and it falls for a very low over the plate. It's ball one. He drops the plate. Got that big black bat of again. He looks over the pick, it comes trailing down, and it's a foul right. One and one. They're going to foul it. Down there at home plate, umpiring at home today. Joe Clems down on first. Dival on second. Here's the third. Here's the pitch. He winds up, shoots it in, and it's all two. Two and one on the bat. Dean hitches up. He throws on the right side. Jen takes that lazy stance with his foot on the rubber. That's in his lance with the signal. Now he's heading the demon. Starts that wind up. The half wind up. Shoots it in, and the batter swings hard. It's down the way the catcher. It's right two. Two and two. Lancy keeps the ball hard back to Dean there, clunks him to the net, and again he assumes that stands on the mound. Right foot forward, both arms hanging lazily. White steps out the for the moment, steps back to the plate. Down two and two on him, two out. Steps back up there, now to face the pitcher, to wind up, and the pitch, and he fouls it high up over the stand. Back to home plate. Ball sailing high over there. I had to get a new ball from umpire Brick Owen. We get back in to Dean. Brace is out here calling encouragement to his men. A lot of pepper into this infield. The option is moving a little impatiently. Here's the pitch. It comes in and in the call track. He floated one over there, fooling Joyner White. And it's right out of hell sight on Mr. White. And the side is retired. The score is 8 2 in favor of the Cardinals. All right, Tom, that's come here. <laughs> the cycle happened at seventh inning. Pete Fox was first up, and he fouled out to Lance. That was a very high foul to Lance. He went back, played it for it, and took it for the close out. <laughs> Picture of Hulk set. Then out to Roche to follow him. Looking for fast play by Leo to Roche to the side of the shortstop. 
And you're your way up there. You're too straight. And this is Dean. No, he knows the right way. Hops in a stage of face offering and triggers a pineapple. And quite let it go. Buy it for cold strike and the third up. At the end of seven innings, we find the National Leaguers, the Bengals, the Cardinals, eight, and the American Leaguers, the Crush Packers, two. Now, there's the crowd here going again. The Packers have that old black ball out, tossing it around. It's like a stupid ball. They tell me they use that ball, uh, running up before he's getting back to the old seat. Hawks got the North South Park pitchers in there for the Packers, and manager Mike Cochran, as part of the back, of course, eight to two. Cochran is still in there. And Georgia is going to have to fight for this first World Series ball game. First half of the season is going to There's Jack Rob Rock taking the place in the batter's box. He winds up. Here's the pitch. Comes over and quits all strike. Strike one on Jack Rob Rock. The right fielder of the St. Louis side over there. Right starting off the eighth inning, leading eight to two. Here's the pitch. Comes in and he laughs when you tipped off the bat. And it's strike two. A foul tip going high over the back end of the fence. He just passed on the bat and it's about to tip his bat. New ball goes back to the pitcher, Elon Hogwick. Big in, Jim Boy, left hander, shoots over the plate, and it's a ball. He falls up. It was high. One and two. Ball one and strike two. It's around the infield and then winds up. And he drives one, a little easy one over the second base, and then it rolls out there. The right field will see the seat at the end of the single for Jack Rossa. He pops one over to the ball. Just a looper right out there, oh, where nobody can get to it. Nice single. Or Jack Rothrock. Frankie Trace comes up next. He walked up to Bill Roke Allen taking the ball from him. That ball has come in, carrying the ball back in, looking at it. Comes and looks around that Charlie Geringer. And finally turns his attention to Frankie Trace, who will take his place in the batter spot. Throws the ball over to Hank Greenwood. There was no chance of getting the runner there, but he crossed over for the moment. Jack Rothrock takes the lead. He's out the punt. The pitcher comes in fast. The it. He has no time getting a second. Toss it down. And Greenberg, instead of going back to touch the plate, catches the runner on the line, coming in to first. Jack Rothrock down on second on the sacrifice. One out. Jack Rothrock on second. And here is Joe Medwick. Joe Medwick, a very defendable batter, up to face Elon Hodgson with a man on second. The score is to you. Hodgson's taking his place back there now with his left foot on the rubber. He looks around at Jack Rothrock and takes the lead off second. That's a far long touch into the air. Shoots it down, and it's a high fly out in the center field. And Jojo White goes back. Is under it and has it. The runner starts down the third and makes a hard throw on down the third, but it was a little wide of the bag, and he flags in safely. Jack Rothrock is down on third base. Two out. After Joe Medley flashes Jojo White out in center field, which brings Rip Collins. Rip Collins, Cardinals first batter. Next to batting order up to bat. Man on third, two out. Score eight two in favor of St. Louis in the start of the eighth inning. Hogg to take the ball. Goes in the double a few times and walks over, picks up the Carlton bag, drives his hand again to him, got stand. He's got both hands behind his back, cross. Looks in the signal, finally winds up, keeps the ball in. It's a bounder down to a second base. Yaron just takes a shoot it down to first, and the side is retired. <laughs> All right, Tom Manning, you can call off and drop him in the start so back of the eighth inning. Here's Tom Manning. Jack Rothrock was first up, and he singles to right center. Mikey Fritch played down a pretty sacrifice, and was out to pitcher hot set to Greenberg. Greenberg packing Fritch on the line. Joey Medwick then got a hold of one and drove it deep into left center field. Jojo White going back to make the shot. Jack Rothoff went to third. Collins can't hit a ground ball down second base for each. Charlie Jones came up with it. Toss to Greenberg, retiring his side. No one, one hit, and so on. So we go to the last half of the eighth inning. Take one of the titles of the Master League out in front, eight to two. <laughs> Pullis. Pullis goes to center field with the St. Louis Cardinals. He's facing Ernie Marsatis. Pullis in center field for the Cardinals. Last half of the eighth inning, American Richard Cochran, who's at the left hand, will lead off for the Cardinals. Get for it. There's Mickey Patton up there. Take his place. <laughs> Here in the eighth inning, the team telling me to do, do a team make a single wind up, comes in and puts all flight. If you didn't offer at it, all flight on him, 
Well, he's one of the ninth inning of this first game of the World Series at Maven Field, Detroit. Keep off shut. The southpaw pitcher is presently in the box for the Tigers, and Cochran is behind the back. First half of the night, and Delancey of the Cardinals is close up. Bill Delancey, Cardinals catcher, first up there. He's got a big bat. Got the trap, and now you all comes up. Here's the pitch, and it's a ball wide in the plate. Back left. Ball was wide and outside. Left-handed batter. Hawks just got the ball again, and the signal is the pitch. Getting in, he fouls it up, clear into the trap box. And the fast man has the ball. Is he going to return it? Well, that's the question here at the moment. Usually balls go back into the playing field, but somebody wants a souvenir of the 1934 World Series, and it stays up in the press box. The ball goes in the game. It's Joe Delancey down there in the batter's box. He winds up, there's the pitch. It's in, and it's right too. He swung hard at that one, but the next was nothing at all. Throws off and wipes his hands. He's in dirt. Takes his place back to the box. Taps the plate. Here's the pitch. That's the ball. Three and two on the batter. Three and two on Bill Delancey. How will the next one be? Always the question in the batter's mind when it's three and two. He's got a looping down. He drives and fires. It looks like it's going into the but not quite. Two shots and goes back up against the fence and takes it on the run. It, that ball looks like another one of those homers into those left field bleachers. So Delancey retires to Doug out. There's one gone here in the Cardinals half the ninth inning. Chick Fullett, who has just replaced Orsatti in the eighth inning in center field for the Cardinals, is next up. Chick Matson goes right. He's taking his place down there in the batter's box now. Ball comes shooting over. It's wide of the plate. It's a ball. Wide to an outside to a right-handed batter. One ball. Out to have it again. Let's go to the Winds up. Shoots it in. He drives it. Out over second base. Way out into center field. It's good for a single. Jojo White throws it back in. A single for Chick Fullett. He just got into the ball game. That was his first time at bat. The O.J. Rocher. Drug stop. St. Louis Cardinals next up. 4-8-3. to three. St. Louis Vichy Cardinals here in the ninth inning. First half of the ninth. Rocher just bat. A man on. One out. Hawks is looking well. First turn, shoots it in fast, and it's a foul into the Tigers' dugout. Taking two policemen and a player to The policeman is coming down at the end of the dugout. He goes to up there, strike one on him, and on base, one gone, four, eight to three. He has a reputation of being able to hit, and it's team trapping with a man on. He's batting average, 258 for the season. He got most of those when it meant something with a man on base. Hawks has the ball after trying it over to Greenberg, trying to see what he could do with Mr. Fuller. He drives it top down to the shortstop and strikes it to second, but there wasn't time to get it down to first. Man is out of second. Dick Fuller and the Roachers on first base with two outs. Dizzy Dean comes up. Dizzy Dean and he's getting a nice man from the fan. As he walks out of that dock, comes sailing very slowly. Off to the plate, walks around back to Flippo, and then Mickey Carson is at his place. Wipes his hand in the dirt, picks up the bat again, back to the plate. The man keeps his grip on it, looks back at the pitcher, here's the pitch. Down to right, down towards second, it's fielded it back there, who runs over, steps on the second base, forcing the runner out at second. That was the ninth inning for the Tigers to lead eight degrees, and here's Tom Manning to tell you about. In the final half of the ninth inning, Delancey was first up. Delancey fires, he's... Awesome. That was a nice throwing bat by the Deuce. Playing over a bit forward left center and dives back into left field to snag that long guy. Bit Fuller, who recently replaced Marsotti. Single to better field. Here's a roach of them fans pulling. No barrel to Gary. A busy team. After following several pitches, that fans to Rocher, John and Gary were on it. Out of the ground, but it's very close to the second base tag. Before we go to the last half of the ninth inning, Pedro Esquardo, the Tiger is free. Come in, Phil. This time this afternoon, now you might hear the 12 series baseball tour. Here we have William Gerard Rogel. That, and he fouled off the first pitch here in the ninth inning. Riding it back on a foul into the gun, down the upper tier. Ball sliding off the top of the bat. Here's Dean Gaspar looking over the signals again. He winds up. Well, Gaspar's the pitch. It's a ball. Wide the plate, and it's one and one. 
You will rode down the stack for ninth inning. First man up. He winds up, and here's the pitch again. Tom shooting in again. It's after guy up. Missing the corner, and it's ball two. Two and one on the batter. Ninth inning with the Cardinals leading eight to three. Over the Detroit Packers in his first game in Naven Field. Here's Jay shooting the pitch, and again, he swings his ball front and back high into the grandstand. Just left the plate. Bill Rogel will step back about his back. Step back in a deck and he's back. That's the plate. Like I said, black bat over his shoulder. Takes a couple of fire swings. Here's his one winding up. Takes a double wind up this time. Oh, that's the batting box. And he swings that arm again. He's starting to wind up again. Takes the stretch and shoots the ball in. And with enough change to take, he drives it down over the left field. Right in the left field and third base and hit. A nice single for Bill Rogel here in the ninth inning. These Packers have had a reputation. Or plenty of runs, batting on to a pitcher in the ninth, and the crowd is warming up. It's trying to drive rooters here in Naven Field. Trying to get mopped and brought around here in the ninth inning. For their team, a wildly favorite, favoring their home gunners. They're trying to stop having the old major. The Don Rock and Glad Road of the first person runs over and touches the bat. Drops it, tears hard in the leg, down it right over the first. Rip Collins took it, stepped on the back for the out. There's a man down on second now. Bill Rogel down on second. One out, one on. He's back, coming back. Bill Rogel down on second. He packs the right fielder. Oh, the bat is up there. He bats right. He's kept in there with his son. And look on his chin. Here's the ninth inning with his team trailing 8-3. to three. He looks around second base and shoots one inning. Swings hard. Missing the ball. And it's strike one on the pass. Ball goes back to Pierce. Here's the watching that man on second. He's a director of physical thing. That's in there. It's a pitch. Comes in. It's a ball along with him. And he's taking down the dirt back of the plate. He's taking it right down on the ground to get it out of there. One and one. All one and strike one. And on, one out in the ninth inning. Four, eight to three. Tiger trailing. He swings last, last one. Out. Down to the third base. He takes the... That's the ninth inning in the third. Throws it over. A very low throw. He just tells the don't let it be scored. Which one the arrow is. On. The man who made the throw. It was low. He tacked your job. I got the man over there. They had to go over to first, but they couldn't get the man at first. He dropped that ball, ripped out and stopped it. He has Arthur coming in the back for Hodgett here in the ninth. Arthur coming in the back for Hodgett. Man on first. Two out. Arthur did a great job driving that ball and getting another man coming in there and then trying to wing it over to first. Here's the pitch, and it's a ball. A ball. On Arthur, he has a place hockey here in the ninth inning. Two out, man on. He's taking great, he shoots it in and he swings hard, getting nothing for his trouble. It's one and one, all one and strike one on Arthur. Arthur's place. Yeah. We misunderstood the name from down there at the last speaker who was Arthur, Robin Arthur. He drives one down, but it goes far before it gets the first. Gaster batting for Hawkins. These two men here on the Packer team, coming over the last week of the man with the announced in the dugout, Gaffer, batting Gary Walker, Southern boy with an accent he got for the ninth. He was watching him, he's up there now, he's back right. Better fielder. He has looked at him hard, turns around us with the man at first, over his shoulder, shoots the ball in and it's high, and it's another ball, it's two and two on Gary Walker. Walker steps out of the box, and being that motion, gives that back and picks up the rosin bag. Contest for Wickle gets his way first, and they both step back in. He gets the signal, makes the stretch, looks over his shoulder, shoots the ball in, and again it's wide, and it's three and two. Three and two, two out, man on first. Back on first. Here's the pitch. He swings hard for the third strike, and the end of the ball game. Jerry Walker missing the offering of his team. 
Lord Cap 15 is sent to you by the Ford Motor Company. Shoulders of Ford and Lincoln Dyers and Ford Trucks. You're partly invited to be their guest again tomorrow when the World Series battle is resumed at Maven Field. And in the meantime, watch the Ford go by. Now we'll turn the microphone over to Tom Manning. We'll give you a summary of the game and its highlights. All right, Tom Manning, come here. For the benefit of our many friends who are just tuned in, the final score today, first game of the World Series, the Cardinals 8, the Tigers 3. The Cardinals 8 runs on 13 hits, the Cards race to run. Titans, 3 runs, 8 hits, and 5 runs. Things went along rather smoothly in the first inning with no score. In the Cardinal half of the second inning, Delancey, who got on a fly ball to Gotham. Or got him, then single to left field. Peroso was up. He was out on a fly to White. Gee, then close to Rochelle at 40. Or got him with safe at second base. <laughs> on Gerringer's Carroll. Trevor Martin. Then with two on and two out, get a ball to third. He was safe at first on Hawaii's throw. Walk off, single to center, drawing, or got him, and D. Martin went to third. Walbach stopped the foot. Hank Fritz is then out. Carriger is in there. The Cardinal half the second. Two runs. That's two hits. The Tigers make two runs. Then he hopped over to the first half. Half the third of it. Joey Leslie. Set off with a stringer. Half third base. Stone. Drawn it out. Jeffrey went to second. Okay. Drew Badman. I took another error. Jerusha. We're going to finish a clerk on the first error. And Stone. Going all the way from second. It's a beautiful slide, just the head of the throw, at home plate. Orsani then tries to right field. Rosa slides it back. Chicago half of the third, it's put them two runs ahead of the Tigers. One run, on one hit, a two ball error for the Tigers. The Tigers scored that first run in the last half of the third. Sadler, it's first up. He was out, beating the call. One, left. Ricky Kaplan, Kingdall, after the call, was going to freedom two and single to left field. Then check it up. Jerusha, Finger. Scoring one. And they just score three to one at the end of the beginning. No more scoring then until the five came to back in the first half of the fifth inning. Goodwin then got a hold of one and drove a five into the left field breaches for a home run. Hines, after getting a count of three and two, he gets. The Roger, that's why he hit. Or got it. Springs with the left field, Hines left the second. The Roger, end of the inning, flying out to hit. Takes the score four to one in favor of the Tigers. In the sixth inning, the Cardinals really broke out, led by the great Jersey team, who, after being led by the foul for missing a strike by double yard, he then parked a two base hit against the barrier in left field. Pepper Martin singles to center field, and Dean across the post, five to one for Cardinals. Jack Walbrock laid down a sacrifice, now there is a goomber. Quick, followed out to Owen. This was a great shot by Bob Owen, who ran some 40 to 50 yards away from the third base, took him down in left field to make the catch. Joey Medlitt. For the count two and two, his fourth hit of the afternoon with a single to right field, scoring Martin. They put our quick Tigers one. Holland then gave perfect execution of the hit to one play with a ringing single to right field, sending Joey Medlitt to third. At this point, Hawkset replaced Barbary. Hawkset is a downfall. Gilassi doubled against the barrier, sending Medlitt and Holland across the plate. Making it eight to one, the Cardinals. Or Johnny, that's all about Scarringer to Greenberg. In the sixth inning, the five scored four runs on five hits and no errors. The Tigers came back in the last half of the sixth inning with Gerringer going out Thomas D. Greenberg singled to center field, but all got him by the two three shot. She was given an error because Greenberg went to second. Bruce Garfield singled to left field and Greenberg scored. Eight for two, the card. Rochelle is out first to call. Garfield went to second. Owen then struck out. No more scoring that until the side of half of the eighth inning. At that time, Ricky Coughlin first up. He was out close to the tower. He guaranteed drive to Medley. Hank Greenberg came up and smacked a long drive out of the Dewey. He left it stand in deep left field at Davis Field for a home run. Making it eight to three, which was the final score. The side of half of the eighth inning, one run, one hit, and four hours. Well, the final score is summary again. St. Louis Cardinals, representative of the National League. Eight runs, 13 hits, and two hours. The Detroit Tigers, representing the American League. Three runs, eight hits, and five hours. The starting pitchers this afternoon, Jerome Dizzy Dean, who pulled in 30 late victories in the regular 
campaign for the National League Club. He was opposed by General Sauber. General Sauber, you know, was one of the outstanding right-hand pitchers of the American League for several years, particularly during the playing season of 1933, when he carried in a great number of victories to assist the Washington Chargers in winning the American League Senate. However, he appeared to be fully fired in the series last year and failed. So he came back again this afternoon, inspired by new surroundings. The crowds out here at Detroit. We went in the box this afternoon, but was treated rather roughly by the representatives of the National League to came to a start. The outstanding players at that point have been quite agreed by a fourth arm, a great master league, and yours truly. Of course, the two long matches for home run. Both in the left field bleachers. One by Joey Redrick of the Cardinal, the other by the first base from Hans Greenberg of the Bank. Bravo and back to that long foul with a flipper. Any time a third tracker goes only a 50 yards down the left field with his back to the plate, that was easily the outstanding play of the day. Billy Rochelle turned in two great plays for seven minutes. He leaped into the air for a bad boundary, got his man at first. Then a fly ball with Chaz Barrett to between. But for the clear out of that seven minutes, Billy Rochelle backed over close to second base cushion, went down on one knee, and came up with a... Skipper, that was a slow play and got it over the first base for another out. And now, don't forget, weather permitting, Ford Motor Company brings you another World Series game tomorrow at 1.15 Eastern Standard Time. The report of this first of the 1934 World Series the team of St. Louis Cardinals and the Tigers of Detroit was sent you through the facilities of the National Broadcasting Company. Bye.